Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Tram Nguyen with DPC Health. Um, today I want to share with you guys about the disease called obesity. Uh, when I was in residency, I realized, I thought that obesity was a disease that patients just eat too much and, and don't exercise, therefore they cause them to be obese and they gain weight. Um, so we were taught that to tell patient, make sure you eat right and exercise and just go over their BMI and all that. But some of my patients uh, were telling me that, oh, they don't eat very much. They only eat one meal a day. I don't know why they're still gaining weight. So then I did a little bit more um, searching onto it and got board certified in obesity medicine. So now I understand obesity a lot more and it's a very, very complex disease. And therefore I wanna share it with you guys today so that everybody else can also understand the complexity of this disease and a way to treat it better, okay? So we'll start out is that obesity is a disease. And like I mentioned, it's caused by multiple, multiple factors. One of them is genetics, it's our gene, right? So we are either, um, the gene causes us to have obesity. Um, we'll go over the detail of it in a little bit. The other thing is sleep. Sleep is very important in our well-being, and it also can contribute to obesity if it, we don't get adequate sleep. And then psychological factors like stress, anxiety, depression, bipolar, um, all those can contribute to um, the obesity disease. The big topic um, that we don't want to forget is hormones. Hormone imbalance also causes the obesity disease. Then one thing that we can't forget about is nutrition, right? Nutrition plays a very um, important role into this and so that plays a role in there too and then obviously we can't forget about physical activity that is a big uh, component of this also and then last but not least medication um, medication plays a huge role into this, okay? So let's go over one topic at a time. So under the genetics, we are either born with the gene, okay? So our parents were obese, and so they passed down the gene to us. So we are now obese, so we got the gene. So, um, or we are, we acquired the disease, it can, the, this disease can be acquired because of all the food that have changed over time. So for example, the processed food, um, that chemicals that get put into food so that the shelf life can stay longer or antibiotics that get put into our meats um, that can cause methylization of our gene and then now cause us to have um, changing in our genes now, we now have the obesity gene. And then from there, we can pass that gene down to our children and our children then also will be obese. So this, this process is kind of like an ongoing, if we, uh, the, especially in the recent years of the, the, um, uh, the food industry, okay? So when you talk about the gene, there's a person, if you have the obesity gene, what that means is that your ability to gain weight is a lot easier than those who doesn't have the obesity gene. So for example, my skinny friend who eat cookies, a whole box of cookie and they don't gain weight. On the other hand, if I smell food or eat a, eat a piece of cookie, then I gain weight right away. It's because I, you know, those who, those who have the obesity gene will gain weight a lot easier than those who doesn't have the gene. And so with that being said, the gene can be suppressed um, if we change the environment, the type of food that we eat. Um, so it's not the end of the world that if you have the gene, but that's something that it's stuck with you. It's, it's part of you once you have the gene already. 
okay? Sleep plays another role into the obesity disease. So somebody who's sleep deprivation, who doesn't sleep well, they could have obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea, or they're so stressed out they can't sleep, will also cause um, sleep deprivation. So when sleep is deprived, there's a hormone that gets increased, which is called ghrelin. Ghrelin is a hunger hormone that causes, it's produced in the stomach. It goes up into the brain and tell you, hey, I'm hungry, feed me, all right? So that generally, the ghrelin hormone is usually generally produced before breakfast, before lunch, and before dinner. But in somebody who slept, sleep deprivation will cause the ghrelin hormone to be a lot higher. So they want to eat a lot more. So then you increase the eating, you eat more, and that in turn causes weight gain. Okay. Now, when somebody who sleep deprivation will also cause them to increase something called cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that gets produced when somebody who is sleep deprivation will also cause them to gain weight, okay? So in addition to that, psychological disease, like I've said, stress, right? Um, anxiety, depression, okay. Also cause increase in cortisol that also causes weight gain, okay? And then the next topic in there that causes contribute to the obesity disease is hormones, especially hormone imbalance, right? So you've got the female hormone imbalance, and then you have the male hormone imbalance. In female hormone imbalance, you're talking about in premenopausal women, if you have estrogen dominance, that means that you have a lot of estrogen production and not enough progesterone, then you will have more weight gain. And then also in addition to that, you have irregular menstrual period, very moody all the time, um, fogginess, can't think, and uh, weight retention. So you have a lot more weight gain. In women who are postmenopausal, so usually late 40s, early 50s, you start to have menopausal symptoms where your period starts to get irregular, your estrogen starts to decrease, progesterone decrease, testosterone decrease. When your hormone starts to decrease, what will happen is you'll get fogginess, um, uh, for memory uh, issues, uh, thinning of the bone, your age, your skin starts to age, um, then you get a lot very moody, hot flashes, can't sleep, and then decrease in sex drive because testosterone goes down, um, muscle mass loss, and then fat mass gain. So you start to gain the fat mass and then you lose the muscle mass. So it's a lot harder for women in their postmenopause to start um, losing weight or in most of the time they gain weight. So if those hormones are imbalanced, that needs to be fixed in order to treat your obesity disease. And men, on the other hand, they will have menopause. So when they have older, um, they will start to usually late 40s, early 50s also, their testosterone level will start to come down. So if you see some of the men, they'll start to have adipose tissue deposit in around the central area, so in the, in the tummy. Um, and then they will have decrease in muscle mass. So sometimes your arms will start shrinking down on the muscle, but gaining fat mass, decreased sex drive, um, fatigue, fogginess, tiredness. So it's their same, same thing, similar to women. Um, and they'll be a little bit more moody also. So those are probably sign of hypogonadism, meaning testosterone is not being produced much. And so we usually will test your testosterone, balancing that, that will help um, their mood, their fat loss and all that too. So hormone plays a huge role in the obesity disease in that aspect, okay? Then the next to it is nutrition, right? So, um, Nutrition, really, we've done. I've done so many different research on what diets to eat, what have what you know, Mediterranean. There's the low carb, the zone diet, the Ornish diet, and so I've done all the research in there. And the one that I found is most effective for weight loss is actually the low carb diet. So what that means is that people who contribute to obesity disease is when they eat a high carbohydrate diet. Um, so, for example, a lot of 
uh, cookies, cereal, bagels for breakfast um, instead of eggs and, and, and turkey bacon, for example. Um, so low carbohydrate and they tend to have, I mean, high carbohydrate and to have a low protein diet is the common, um, commonly what is, is happening. So um, uh, in, in that case, when you have a low protein diet, then you will also uh, cause you to have a increase in ghrelin, right? So for example, if you were to eat breakfast and you ate a bowl of cereal, you probably be hungry by 11 o'clock because the carbohydrate doesn't suppress ghrelin very much. So ghrelin is a hunger hormone. We want to suppress it so that we don't feel hungry. So if you eat a diet that's high in protein though, protein will suppress hunger longer. So for example, for the same breakfast, instead of eating the cereal, you eat um, chicken and eggs, or um, you could eat some turkey bacon or some bacon and eggs. You will feel a lot fuller longer than if you were to eat a bowl of cereal. So that's because the, the ghrelin hormone is suppressed longer. Okay, so that's one of the component to the nutrition. And then physical activity, right? So there's two types of physical activity. We talk about the aerobic and the anaerobic, right? So one of that means is that, so there's the running and, and biking and, and uh, running, um, uh, increasing your, your heart rate via running cardio um, stuff. So that will increase in the fat burn. On the other hand, the anaerobic is where we talk about um, doing weight training to build muscle. So both of these are component, important components to do to help the obesity disease. Uh, so you want to fat burn and you want to also build muscles so that when you're not exercising, the muscle will help increase the metabolism and increase your, your fat burn and energy burn, okay? Then the last component to this is medication. A lot of people don't know that the current medication they are taking caught, is contributing to their disease process. So I will name some of the medication. There's a long list, but today I just named some of them. And in the future, we'll talk about just medication that cause weight gain. So we'll have a whole lecture on that, okay? But anyway, so um, the common one is insulin. So insulin, we use that for diabetic. Um, and insulin, what they do is they take sugar from your bloodstream, put it into the fat cells. So a lot of insulin will cause weight gain. Um, so in, in patients who are diabetic, I usually try to steer away from insulin. So I use uh, medications like um, GLP-1, like Victoza, Saxenda, uh, Ozempic. Those are the brand name medicines, but those are the, the ones that we, I, would, I would use more likely. And then uh, metformin, that is the weight negative. So we try to use weight negative medicine for a diabetic patient versus weight positive medicine so like insulin uh, like the glipizides and, and whatnot okay so insulin is one um, antihistamine is a big one that a lot of people don't know so for example Benadryl um, Zyrtec those are all allergy medicine they're antihistamine so they tend to cause more weight gain um, so some of my patients who have chronic allergies, I'll use um, Singulair instead because those are mast cell stabilizer. It doesn't cause the weight gain as much. Or if I have to use a antihistamine, I like Claritin better because it's less the dating, less of the weight gaining aspect. So um, that's antihistamine. And then steroids, right? So like... Generally, if you have a like a, a pneumonia or something or bronchitis, we give you a course of steroid. That's probably not going to cause you to gain weight. But those who are on chronic steroid because of, say, a rheumatoid arthritis or something like that, then that can cause you to gain weight because you have chronic release of the um, chronic exposure to, to, to the steroids that will cause weight gain. Okay, the other thing that um, I talk about is the benzodiazepine. So this one, we talk about the uh, Xanax or Clonopin, those are anxiety medicine, those kind of slow down the body and the brain. And so that also slows down the metabolism and that contributes to weight gain also. Um, then last uh, in this 
category is then we talk about pain medicines. So pain meds, so we're talking about like hydrocodone, tramadol, um, things, medicines that kind of sedates, makes you drowsy, uh, will tend to cause you to weight gain. So also like um, medicines that, that nerve pain medicine, like gabapentin, those are kind of slows you down, so will cause weight gain also. Uh, but anyway, so in summary, obesity is a very complex disease. We cannot just focus on one problem without the other. So you got to think about what is the patient's genetic like? What is their sleep pattern? What's their psychological condition? Do we need to help with that? Are there hormone imbalance? Are they eating the right nutrition? Are they having enough physical activity or what kind? Is it balance? And then looking at the medication list, what is causing them to have the weight gain? Is it what is it their steroids? Is it their insulin? What is it that can we change the patient on a weight positive medicine to switch it over to a weight negative medicine? So um, unfortunately, sometimes we can't fix all the problem, but if we can fix majority of the issues, um, then that will really help with the, the contribution to the disease so that we could lose the weight and keep it off. I think um, in a lot of the weight loss program out there, it will help patients lose weight, but they gain it back and they gain more because their, their, their root problems is not treated. So um, if you are uh, wanting to, if you do have this disease and or know someone who have the disease and want them to get help, you want to make sure you find a provider that is willing to work and evaluate the whole disease process and not just <clears throat> focusing on, hey, eating right and exercise. There's a lot more to it um, to really treat this disease. Um, I hope you guys had a good time learning uh, with uh, with us today. So uh, hopefully we'll have more of these series. I'll try to go over, you know, one, um, there's seven causes here. So I'll maybe go over um, one of the cause each week so that everybody can understand a little bit more detail on them and kind of studies that supports them so that uh, we're all uh, more knowledgeable uh, in treating this disease process. Uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from you guys. So if you have any comments, please comment us. Um, and then any feedback on how we can do these videos better so that we all can learn with each other. Um, all right, you guys have a good day. And it was uh, a pleasure to share my knowledge. Have a good day.